So you already know why you should quit smoking, and you probably already know that it's really hard to quit smoking. Maybe you've tried before, been partially successful, been successful and gone back, or had trouble and not been able to be successful. We're going to talk now about some extra tools to help making quitting easier, particularly we're going to talk about medications. Well, why is quitting smoking so hard? It turns out that it's hard because nicotine is so addictive. Nicotine, it turns out, has receptors throughout the body. God gave us nicotine receptors, presumably not to be better tobacco addicts, but to do all sorts of things like control heart rate and blood pressure and mood, but in small amounts of nicotine. And cigarettes and other tobacco products massively hijack that system with a sledgehammer and take over and hijack those receptors to make cigarettes addictive. So you use tobacco and you gain tolerance over time, which means you need more and more of the nicotine, more and more of the tobacco to get the same effect, and the same amount does less and less, so you escalate the use, and the addiction gradually escalates. As the nicotine stimulates both the autonomic system and activates a person and gives them energy, and causes release of dopamine in the brain, which is the uh, messenger of reward and pleasure, those are the mechanisms whereby the system is hijacked and it becomes more addictive. Once you're addictive, then stopping the nicotine causes withdrawal, and withdrawal is a miserable feeling. Withdrawal is horrible and one of the things that causes people to have such difficulty quitting. The bad news is that the withdrawal symptoms are many and severe. Low energy, difficulty concentrating, mood changes such as irritability and moodiness, nervousness, depression, anxiety, headache, insomnia, uh, increased appetite, some weight gain, and certainly very strong cravings for cigarettes, which is a very significant hallmark which gets people in trouble. That's the bad news, but the good news is that medicines, which we're going to talk about, can help manage and overcome and relieve that withdrawal. So, speaking of medicines, what if there were some medicines that could help you quit? It turns out there are, and medicines can work by a number of important mechanisms. They can block the effects of the action of smoking, that is, so that if you smoke, you don't get the same boost, you don't get the same reward, you don't get the same addictive process. It can reduce the craving and desire and hunger for cigarettes. It can reduce the reward and pleasure that smokers get from tobacco. It can prevent withdrawal, which we talked about. It can act as a non-impairing substitute for nicotine. That's in particular nicotine replacement therapy, which we'll get to in a second. It can enhance the short-term negative consequences of smoking so that smoking is less pleasurable and leads to unpleasant feelings instead of the usual addictive rewarding ones. And it can prevent relapse to tobacco after a period of stopping, which is very important because that's common that people relapse after quitting. So here are some of the currently available medications for quitting tobacco. The first big class is nicotine replacement therapy, or NRT. That includes patches, which most of you may have heard of. There's nicotine gum, nicotine nasal spray, a nicotine inhaler, nicotine lozenges, and a newer thing on the scene is e-cigarettes or electronic cigarettes, which are smokeless nicotine delivery systems, and we're not as sure about those being effective, but the others are very well studied, very effective, very easy to use. There are two anti-craving medicines, both taken by pill, one called Varenicline, which is brand name Chantix, and one called Bupropion, brand name Zyban, also brand name Welbutrin. And the way these anti-craving medicines work is that you take them, over time, they reduce craving and reward and pleasure and the action of tobacco, and that leads to reduced use. Each medicine in turn, nicotine replacement therapy, works by substituting for the nicotine that you're ingesting with a kind of constant level of nicotine so that your body doesn't crave, and you can gradually taper that off rather than having to quit cold turkey. The bupropion works by boosting the body's natural dopamine so that the reward increase, the pleasure increase that nicotine causes is blunted and therefore you don't have the same hijacking effect. And the varenicline works by being a turner honor and at the same time a turner offer at the nicotine receptor. So again, cigarettes don't give their addictive effect, the actions are blocked, craving and reward are reduced. 
So here's how to use these medicines in collaboration with your doctor. Asking for help is the first and key step. Many times people are demoralized and cynical and pessimistic. I can never quit. Who can help me? What can I do? It'll only work if I'm hit by a blinding bolt of lightning. That's unrealistic. You can ask for help. You should ask your doctor. You should ask your counselor. You should ask your therapist. There are quit lines. And you should specifically ask for medications. You can get supplies sometimes for free in certain places from quit lines, but certainly your doctor can prescribe them. And if you ask, that's the only way you can get help. The next step is to set a goal to zero in on a target and we usually do that, recommend you do that by picking a quit date. When is it that you're going to quit? It can be tomorrow, it can be next week, it can be your birthday, it can be New Year's, but focus yourself on a goal and try to make that the time that you're actualizing your desire to quit. Between now and then, start to cut down, do the best you can, but the quit date is day zero. Now, go ahead and start anti-craving medication a few weeks before that quit date. Also, add nicotine replacement therapy, that's the patches, lozenges, maybe both, around the time you begin to quit to reduce craving, to reduce withdrawal. And the combination of a long-acting nicotine replacement, like a patch which stays on your arm, delivers nicotine over 12 to 24 hours in a steady way, along with a short-acting nicotine replacement, like a lozenge or a gum or a spray that gives you a short, brief burst of nicotine, the same way that you'd get with a cigarette, on top of the patch, that combination turns out probably to be more effective than either alone. There are other tools in addition to medicine. Medicine isn't everything, so add counseling if you can get it. Get support from group or individual, telephone, quit lines, online support centers. But the combination of those tools with medicine is the most effective. It's important to remember that any medicine, of course, even a Tylenol, can have side effects. Don't just tough it out. If you have trouble, ask your doctor. Monitoring can help. Changing dose can help may turn out that it's going to go away, so get reassurance. If you think you need stronger tools, more medicine, different doses of medicines, different medicines, switching back and forth, all of those things are available, but only if you ask. Remember to celebrate your successes, even if they're small. Even if you haven't fully quit, cutting down is remarkably helpful and will lead you to practice for future attempts to quit all the way. Never be afraid to try again and again and again, no matter how many times it takes. Repeat all of these things as needed till you finally get it and never give up. It's easier to quit than you think. You can do it. Your health will be so much better. You'll be glad you do it. And it's important to know that medications can be an important part of the solution. So ask for help.